come on, you useless old piece of... Yeah. So recently I've watched through a sci-fi series that is actually on Netflix, that of Cowboy Bebop, which of course is based on the 1998 anime of the same name. This series pretty closely follows the original setting, which is in our solar system in the year 2071. This is not a review of the series itself, merely a primer on the background lore of the show without plot spoilers, but I will be talking about some events in the past that are alluded to, such as what the hell happened to Earth. The technology of Cowboy Bebop's future is a mixed bag. While there have been great strides and advances in almost every field, futuristic tech such as force fields, energy weapons and genetic modification are rare due to their costs. This means that on most worlds you'll occasionally see science fiction elements such as these, the most common being space vehicles and holograms, bumping shoulders with the near modern day firearms, cars and construction techniques. While flying from moon to moon is possible in a spacecraft, it still takes uh, time, and interplanetary travel takes months of flight. Or at least it would, if it wasn't for the Gate Public Corporation which pioneered the development of hyperspace gates. A gate is a series of rings, lined up to form a hyperspace lane and positioned in a stable orbit around one of our planets. A gate connects to a partnered one orbiting another planet or planetoid and propels a vessel into a hyperspace realm where faster than light travel is possible. This corridor that is formed cannot be veered from without some serious tech behind it and generally you'd not want to try as exiting the corridor mid-flight would result in destruction of the ship. Think mass relays from Mass Effect, although they're not identical in principle. Rumour has it however that there exists unauthorised and off the books gates constructed but forgotten about. These, if they exist, would be referred to as dark gates and would technically be completely illegal so it's a good job they don't exist and are most definitely not used as smuggling routes. In 2071 the gates are effectively manned by security patrols and toll booths. Failure to produce a toll meant no travel and the gate operators could simply shut down a gate or even suspend a vessel from exiting hyperspace should there be a security issue. Additionally, unauthorised approaching of a gate may result in warnings before deadly force is authorised. Such security is not without reason however, aside from maintaining the monetary interest, gates technology is one of the biggest achievements of humans and messing with it can cause things to go horribly wrong as it did in the past. In 2022, huh, a disaster hit Earth when the first astral gate constructed exploded taking with it a large chunk of Luna. The rocky debris from the event rained down on Earth over the next few decades, destroying cities in meteor showers and crippling the planet, throwing up clouds of impact dust, and these showers continue even into the current year of the show. 4.7 billion people were killed across the entire event, and those who survived generally only did so because they made it off-world, or they remain with a vigilant eye on the sky. It is still inhabited, although many consider it a dying world as the wrecked planet continues to trap solar heat and burn up, its once rich biomes now withering away year by year. It has since had a new astral gate created but is considered a dead end of a world, shrouded in debris, dust and its once great cities are mostly abandoned to ruin, and a once unifying central government no longer holds sway over its colony worlds. Most worlds have their own governing body now and most of the largest and most influential entities are corporations. In the cracks of this political and business landscape, organised crime flourishes to pick up the remnants and sometimes even hold more sway than a government over certain territories. As humans spread out across the solar system, they brought with them their diverse cultures, languages and peoples, settling across multiple worlds in a mash of different origins. Almost every location where mankind settled became a diverse pot of people from all backgrounds. Humans were not the only species to make it off Earth however, as all the worlds settled within the system lacked life of their own, so Earth's flora and fauna was brought with us to populate these worlds. In the shows, worlds that are too small to cling on to an atmosphere have their own habitable zones shrouded by an atmospheric barriers that allow fast moving ships to pass through, but not gases. How the gravity is created on these worlds 
is not known, but on ships and stations, well, centrifugal force is in play. Mars's thin atmosphere makes it difficult to completely terraform so far, but it is the highest population world. Its thin atmosphere provides little chance for life, but with numerous craters, colony cities have been constructed using the walls to establish their borders. Each crater contains an atmospheric farm, which chucks out a manufactured and breathable atmosphere, allowing for life to persist sheltered around these domes of breathable air. Venus too was now an inhabited planet, with its poisonous, pressurised and lethally hot atmosphere now replaced with a breathable one, albeit one with a high helium concentration. However, its long scarred, rocky surface remains barren and desert-like. Instead, cities are constructed in floating platforms above the rock, which are far more habitable and life clings to these, converting the remaining carbon dioxide to oxygen. However, these specialised plants, maybe remnants of terraforming efforts, do produce a spore that can be dangerous to humans, the so-called Venus sickness. It can render a person blind. Moving through the asteroid belt now, and many of these rocks have pressurised stations on them, complete with artificial gravity caused by their spin. Unlike the planets, most of these can only support a single city or town. We then get to the gas giants of our solar system, and while these remain uninhabited, their many moons show great potential. Ganymede has a population of 8 million and was terraformed by melting its surface ice to reveal a deep salt water ocean. It is now effectively a water-covered planetoid with a thriving fishing industry. Incidentally, the Bebop ship itself, home of the crew of bounty hunters the show follows, is a converted fishing trawler, hence the literal boat-shaped front of the vessel and its preference for water landings. The moon Callisto is wet and cold, while Europa has similar atmosphere-controlled settlements as found on Mars. Io is basically a barren desert, its violent geology seemingly tamed somewhat, and aside from this there is little else going for it. Titan, the largest moon of Saturn, is notable pretty much for the fact that it has been rendered habitable and was the site of a large battle between Mars and some other belligerent around the early to mid 2060s. Uranus, Neptune and Pluto all have settlements on them too. Pluto is in fact host to a maximum security prison, but apart from that not much else is referenced. So thank you for watching this video on the solar system, as envisioned in Cowboy Bebop. Whether you're watching the original or checking out the adaptation, while the storylines diverge slightly, the universe in which they are both set remains pretty much the same. So go ahead and enjoy either one. I've been Rick, and well, see you later, space. Oh, come on.